Let's run the Setup Assistant. And here we are on the first page. And on the first page there are a number of important options. First, I want to be sure and check off the four boxes at the top. That would be run your game project, run the lumberyard editor and tools, compile the game code, and compile the engine and asset pipeline. Once you've done that, select the version of Visual Studio you will be using down here at the bottom. You can choose from 2013, you can choose from 2015, or you can choose both if you like. Once those choices have been made, you may continue to the next page. Either select the page from the menu on the left, or click on the next button in the bottom right corner. On the second page, we have required software. Verify that everything is checked off under the status column on the far right. They should all have a little green check indicating they are good to go. You can see that Y's and the FFmpeg are not. That was expected. We haven't installed Y's yet, and although we added the FFmpeg software to the third-party directory, we still need to set the file path. If something isn't installed, you can click on the Install It or Get It link, and the Setup Assistant will help you with that. Keep in mind, Lumberyard is still in beta, so it will be a little rough around the edges in places. However, you can see they are making significant progress towards creating a setup assistant that will eventually make the installation and the setup of Lumberyard convenient and easy for users. For now, it is still a work in progress. First, let's install WISE. Click on the Get It link next to the warning alert that indicates it is not yet installed. This will set up the installation for exactly the software we need to install. This improves confidence and convenience. I will make my selections here real quick and then scroll down and click on the install button at the bottom. Success! It should now be listed as installed. Next, let's set the FFmpeg file path. All we need to do is browse to the location in the third-party folder where we installed it. In the third-party folder, you sh should find the FFmpeg folder. Open that, and you should see a binary directory that's listed as the bin folder. Once you find the bin folder, select it and click on OK. It should be as easy as that. Now everything should be checked off is good to go, so we are done with installing the required software. Everything should be green at this point. Moving right along to the next page, we have the required SDKs. Notice that the FBX Software Development Kit is listed here too. They provide useful information to help users install it too. Since we've done this already, we can jump right to the easy part. All we have to do is click on the Install All button at the very top of the page here. It is a handy easy button that will install the rest of the required software development kits you will need to run Amazon Lumberyard. Go ahead, click on Install All. Note the progress bar at the bottom of the page. Be warned, this may take a few minutes. Patience you must have. I'll see you on the other side. Good luck. The required SDKs have finished installing. Let's verify that everything was installed properly. Checking the status on the far right here. Looks like it's all good. So let's move along and take a quick look at the optional SDKs. I'm not planning to install any of these at this time. If you want to install anything at a later date, all you have to do is run the Setup Assistant and update your configuration. Moving along, now you may not be using plugins, but we still want to check this page and verify the RC shell commands have properly been installed. This is important. Don't forget to check it. Once again, whether or not you install any plugins at this time doesn't matter. 
You can always add them later if you wish. Just relaunch the Setup Assistant and install whatever you want. Finally, let's take a look at the summary page. Everything looks good. From here we can launch the Lumberyard Editor if we wish by clicking on the Launch Editor button. We can also select Configure Project which will launch the configurator. The configurator is used to create and manage your projects. Let's take a look at that first. Click on the Configure Projects button. And here we are. As you can see, Lumberyard has a number of sample projects already installed. And the sample project on the far right, the one with the white check mark, indicates it is the default project. When you run the Lumberyard Editor, the default project is the one that is loaded. It is easy to change the default project. Simply select the project you want as default and click on the Set as Default button in the top right corner. It is as easy as that to set the default project. I'm going to leave mine set to the Samples project. If you wish to create a new project, all you have to do is click on the Create New button. Creating a new project is a little more complex than this, so I don't plan to create a new project at this time, but perhaps in the next guide. What you may notice missing is there's no way to easily delete an existing project. If you want to delete a project, you will have to do so manually. It isn't hard, but there is one potential problem you should be aware of. I'll show you how, but I will warn you, if you delete the default project, the project configurator will not launch. It won't do anything, and it won't give you any indication as to what the problem is either. So, before you delete a project, just make sure it is not set to default. And if it is set as default, just set another project as default before you delete it. To delete a project, go to your Lumberyard directory. Find the dev directory and open it. Scroll down through the directory until you find your project folder. And this is one of two locations that will hold your project files. The other folder is located in the code directory. To completely delete a project, just delete both of those folders. Now the samples project is currently set as default, so if I forget to change the default project and I delete those two folders, I deleted the project and then closed the project configurator. Now if I try and launch the project configurator, nothing. Nothing happens. It won't work. And I don't know why. And I will be very unhappy. Try and avoid that mistake. All I need to do is restore the project from the trash. Assuming I haven't emptied the trash, of course. Get it out of the trash. Put it back where it belongs. And now, the project configurator, it runs. And I am very happy. Try not to learn that lesson the hard way. You will not be happy when that happens. Because, if you should delete your trash, fixing it will be more difficult. Much more difficult. That covers the basics with the Project Configurator. And that means there's only one task left. To run the editor and verify it is working. And I'll do that in the next video.